So just imagine you want to send a text message. From say here to somebody in China. You just send and off it goes. That's simply not true. First you punch it into your smartphone and off it goes to the nearest cell phone tower which receives the signal. Your electromagnetic wave is converted to light and goes to the nearest central office where it's multiplexed and combined with hundreds and thousands and millions of text messages. A lot of those signals will terminate in Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Chicago, Denver. Yours needs to go into a fiber that goes across the Pacific. Then the signal reaches China. Your text message is identified. Experiences the reverse process to what happened here in the United States. Until it reaches your friend in China. And the trip takes 1 20th of a second. That's the time it takes light to traverse 10,000 kilometers. That was just the story of this one little text message. But this is happening millions and millions of time every hour across the globe. And all of that is carried by the fiber optic network that none of us can see, but all of us will use. In 1960, when I was at Oxford, there was a visitor from Bell Labs. His name was Rudi Kompfner. He said three magic words that basically changed my life. Imagine the bandwidth. I knew there was a potential, but I, I didn't really think it would develop that fast. I've heard articulate speech produced by sunlight. I've heard a ray of the sun laugh and cough and sing. These were the words of Alexander Graham Bell. Dr. Bell insists that what the telephone accomplishes with the aid of a wire, his photophone accomplishes with the aid of a sunbeam. This was the birth of the idea of using light for communications, but it would take over 100 years to make his dream a reality. Man has created a new light. With it, we can simulate the energy of the stars. Alexander Graham Bell was obviously fascinated by light. So am I. This is coherent light. I use it to chase away the deer sometimes. <laughs> the invention of the laser was huge. It is like going from white noise to the beautiful and differentiated sounds of a violin. We all of a sudden had a spectrally pure source. What fiber optics really enabled is limitless capacity. Capacity that's there in abundance and that's there for people to use. I'm one of the few people left around here that came here when fiber optics was just starting. In 1977, the first optical fiber communication systems carried 45 million bits per second. At that time, an astronomical amount of information, and it turned out that that wasn't enough. So we exploited time. We switched the laser off and on at very fast rates. In 1983, fibers transmitted 90 million bits per second. Technology just kept getting better and better and better. 1985 to 155 million bits per second. A remarkable thing happened. Data started being transmitted over optical fibers. In the early 1990s, two and a half billion bits per second. But that's where we hit engineering limits. We exploited different properties of light with wavelength division multiplexing. You can place different colors of light onto a common channel. First two, then four, then eight, now up to a hundred different wavelengths. By 1995, each color signaled at 10 billion bits per second. But then we hit limits again. So what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
career in technology was a completely different way of utilizing the properties of light. In the past, we only had one dimension. We could switch light on and off. With Coherent, we suddenly had two more dimensions to use. So we constructed signaling formats that used the notion of phase, but also of amplitude. Then we were using the polarization of the optical signal. Now with the Coherent, suddenly we could do 10 times more capacity. So we came out with the first 100G in 2010. Then we quickly followed up with uh, 400G first field trials actually in 2012. Now uh, a single fiber can carry up to 10 terabits of information per second. And yet uh, we've gotten to the point where that's not going to be enough. The challenge to further increase capacity is more difficult than it, it has ever been. We are running out of options. We are now at the fundamental limit where we cannot go further because of laws of physics. So what we're trying to do now is exploiting space as the final frontier. The vision of the future is the concept of spatial multiplexing. So one strand of glass, the width of a human hair, could have 10 or 20 or 40 cores in it. With spatial multiplexing, we could break the petabit per second barrier, which is 10 times more than what we had before. So at the same time, we need to work on something else, a radically different. In the past, we often used optics only as a big dump pipe, to just to pump through capacity. The capacity growth is not sustainable anymore. We need to change the game. Say that you have hundreds of thousands of people in the same place. We want the network to deliver capacity where it is needed and when it is needed. So we know that optics has to become more flexible, more intelligent. That is the vision of the future and that is where the great uh, uh, technical uh, challenges lie. You always have to be ahead of the crowd and that's always a challenge. Do you think they can do it? Excuse me? Do you think they can do it? Oh sure, there are very clever people here. There's always something new to be done and they've done it.